Okay. So what I was saying is I'll put it on you, Gare. Just because I wasn't recording and I thought that that was a good tidbit. I know. I did. Well, your, your light. The light's in your face. Thank you. Um, Amber. We're watch, watching that old helper. That helper there. Said that she gets sad Amber, and depressed Amber. when she has to, when she walks by the the her script for Iron, not Iron Man, Aquaman. It oh just brings back such mad memories of what she went through. But yet, but yet. She oh, then say, Savannah, I, Savannah, yes. Savannah, can I, can I get this out? Maybe. But she then, okay, so she says this, this is why, I me. Mean, this is why Elaine, her lawyer, is questioning her. So this is her lawyer asking her how it made her feel when her, um, part got cut in the Aquaman 2 movie. And her words was, oh, I'm just sad and anguish and it just brings up all the memories and I'm just depressed. That's what she said. But yet when Camille, um, Johnny Depp's lawyer, asked her, oh, so you weren't afraid to go to Penthouse 3? You weren't afraid to go to the house in the Bahamas. You weren't afraid to go to the house in, um, in Australia, in Russia. And she said, no, why would I? <laughs> okay, you said that he held you down, punched you in your head. Blood was everywhere, even though we seen the pillow. I mean, we seen the cover, not a drop of blood. Um, you said he held you by your throat against the wall. You said that he threw things at you. You said that he, um, he hit you in the face with a phone. And these are multiple, like, and all these things happened in said, said, uh, said places. It may be in Penthouse 3. Maybe it was in Australia. Maybe it was Russia. Maybe it was the Bahama House. I only say that, that, that doesn't call you anguish. That doesn't cause you depression. That doesn't make you sad. But you walk in, like, and you physically, your words, not mine, you physically getting beat up multiple times in multiple um areas multiple locations and you're fine with going back to said um locations without even having a flicker of fear in your chest but you get depressed you are sad. You're anguished by walking by a script of a movie that you're in. That they cut your scene down. Okay. Make it make sense. I'm, I'm asking for a friend. I'm truly asking because my thing is if I got beat the way she did, I'm using, well, I was going to say that, the way she did. Now, I was going to say the way she said that she did. I was going to correct myself. If I got abused, even half of what she said she did, in only one of them places, or in more than them places that I named. I'm probably missing some. Don't quote me. But yet, you're getting attacked in multiple places. You can go back to them multiple places, 
without fear. You can tell him that he's a big baby. You can taunt him without fear. This is your abuser to your words. You said he abused you. He smacked you for laughing at a tattoo that he got before he met you. Okay, so he will smack you over a tattoo, but he won't he won't smack you or he won't attack you over you saying, Go on, Johnny, tell the world nobody will believe you, which is a damn lie, Amber, because I believe him one hundred percent. I was raised by alcoholic narcissists. You remind me of my mother. You remind me of my sister. So yes, I believe what Johnny says. And you know what, Amber? Just to put the cherry on the top, because I'm speaking to you personally. He's not even telling everything. Because, like I said, I grew up with an alcoholic narcissist. And the stuff that she did, I'm just saying, I can imagine, I can imagine what you did. And I'm not saying y'all were the same person, but I'm saying birds of a feather flock together. And, see, I was, <laughs> let me keep it classy, because I was about to, I was about to go there. I'm only mad because, yes, I know that male domestic violence is real. Because I have seen it most of my life. Most of my life. Gare, yeah. tell him how I had to protect Murphy. Yep. Multiple times. She attacked him. He fell, fell, had, he got knocked over a chair. She yeah. Attacking him with a knife. Attacking him with a knife. Amber, what she would do is she would wait for Johnny to be fall down drunk or wait for him to be high on his Roxy Cottons and nod off and then go and harm herself because narcissist people do that. They harm themselves and they can cry on the drop of a dime. Only Amber, baby, you must have missed that course in narcissism because you can't seem to get your tears out. You can't get your tears out. But a real narcissist, one that's a professional, see, you are a narcissist. You, you think that you are the queen narcissist. But baby girl, you haven't met a real one until you met my mama. Because my mom, I could call her right now and she can... She can cry on demand. Okay, well, sit on the bed. My point of me ranting and raving is you have more feelings about a script to a movie that you're in. You have more of an emotion to that script than you do to him attacking you. These are your words. These are not my words. I'm just repeating what you said. That you have more emotion. Now you didn't say that you have more emotion, but I am I'm assessing what you said. You said that you get sad, you get anguished, you get depressed when you walk by the script of that movie. Yet you are perfectly okay and don't have the slightest twing of scared of fear when you go into these places that you said that he brutally these are your words that he brutally attacked you where blood was on the wall blood was on the floor blood was everywhere these are your words and that doesn't even make your heart skip a beat. 
but yet a script to a movie makes your heart almost stops because it's so depressed. It just wants to stop beating. Not to mention she's so afraid of him that she's sending out pictures to try to embarrass him. Yeah. You're so like afraid of him. A... You're so afraid of your words, not mine, your abuser, that you send embarrassing, embarrassing photos of him out, knotted out, sleeping on the floor, sleeping in chairs, ice um, cream ice cream all over him, and your worst, a cigarette that was burning his thigh, but yet his thigh wasn't red. You coincidentally took the cigarette out of his hand. Okay, well, you shouldn't have took a picture of him because... You said that you were always there to take care of him, Amber. That's what you said. Your words, not mine. But yet, if you really did grow up in an abusive house, you would know that the first rule of the house is we don't talk about family business. You, according to yourself, your parents were heroin addicts and very abusive. Okay, if that's true, I'm not saying that they wasn't. I don't know your people. I can't say nothing about your mama because your mama's deceased. And your daddy, I don't know him. But what I'm saying is, if you really grew up in a family like that, the first thing that they're going to tell you is, we don't talk about family business. Outside business, me, our family business is not outside business. They might say a little, something a little different, but the words mean the same. What goes on in this house ain't nobody business. And that's what your parents would have said to you when they got high, when they used to abuse you and your sister with me. Johnny would have said that because, like you said, your words, not mine. He was a megastar. And everybody is yes men. And everybody's going to do things for him because he's so famous. Your words, not mine. And if that's the case, which he is a megastar, literally before you were born... You were born in 86, he became famous in 85. Like I said, little girl, sit down. Now, with him being as famous as he is, the first thing he will say to you is, we're not going to tell nobody about this. And if he really beats you, like you said he did, Soon as you told Raquel, your friend, your words, not mine, that lived beside you in one of the penthouses, he would have kicked Raquel out of the house, out of, out, of, out of that penthouse, because she's too close for comfort. Then you will have no friends. Whitney would not have lived in one of the penthouses. Raquel... And, um, um, what's the other friend name? I forgot the other friend name. She also lived, I'm, I don't know, she lived with Raquel. I don't know, I, I, I don't know where that friend lived, but I, I know it was, I know it was, it was another friend besides Raquel that also lived in the penthouse. That was Johnny's that he got before y'all were married. Let, let's put that on the table. You did put in on not near eight, one of them. He bought all eight. Before y'all were born, they were his. Not before you were born, but before y'all got married. They were his. They were not communal property. They were bought before the marriage. So they were his. But you know what? You squeezed two out of them. You squeezed a, a classic car out of them. You squeezed your horse that you abused. And you got jealous because he bought Lily Rose. A horse, and you acted like a kid. What about me? So he bought you a horse that you really didn't want. You only wanted it because Lily Rose got one. Sad. His mama bought him a dog before she died. And you got mad that his mama bought him a dog. So what did he do? He went out and bought you a dog. 
And then when y'all got divorced, you took that man's dog. That was his dog. His mama bought him that dog. Your funky old daddy didn't buy it. You stole it from him. And yeah, I said stole it. You stole his fucking dog and gave it to your daddy that fights dogs. Is that dog alive? I'm worried about that dog, Ember. That's an innocent animal. That was his dog. That wasn't yours. You could take your dog. I really don't want you to take your dog, but he bought that for you. His mama bought him that dog, and you took it. <laughs> but yet, let me not yell because you might think it's threatening. I'm not threatening you. I'm, I'm just giving you your words that you put out there. I'm using what I got against you. Let's say it. I did. I said it. Because I believe 0% of what you're saying. When you're like, I didn't want the money. I wanted nothing. Yeah, you got a, the equivalence of $15 million When your divorce settlement was 7 million which bitch you're not worth a million dollars a month or five hundred thousand my bad i i didn't do the math right yeah i was married or no no okay when, when it comes out loud i was right because like all everything together with him paying the taxes on that seven million with him donating this with him doing everything that you wanted it equivalated to 15, 15 million dollars. That's a million dollars a month. You're not worth a million dollars. I'm not worth a million dollars a month. And I like me. I like me pretty well. And I'm not worth a million dollars a month. But see, the difference between me and you is I literally do not want anything. I literally want nothing. Then what stopped you from paying, like doing your obligation between the 2008, February 2018 and March of 2019, because that's when the suit came. You had a year and a month to go ahead and pay the ACLU yep. and uh, the Children's Hospital. More than enough time to pay them that. And the biggest payment that they got wasn't so even from, from, from you. you. You paid the equivalence of $350,000. Elon Musk paid 500000 So he paid more than you did. Because, oh boy, that boy is whipped. You must got some monster down there. For him to be just so... You know what? I'm not going to yuck nobody's yump. Because what he likes, I don't like. And what I like, he don't like. And that's okay. Because we two different people. He don't have to like what I like. And I don't have to like what he like. But I will say, you are a very beautiful young lady. But beauty fades. And what you look like on the inside. Because look, you can look at me. I know that I am nobody's dime piece. I never claim to be. It's very insulting if somebody said that I was. Because that's not what I want people to see. I want people to see my kindness. I want people to see my generosity. I want people to see my inside of me. The real me. Rather than the outside of me. Like I tell people all the time. I'm not girly. And I'm not girly. Believe me. I, am, I feel like I'm far from girly. But, that don't mean that I'm not a real woman. I might not be girly, but I do know how to treat people. I'm one of the kindest people, and this is just me ragging on myself. I'm one of the kindest people that you will ever meet. I would literally give you the shirt off my back. Probably not my shirt off my back, because I don't want nobody to see my fat. I'm fat. There, if you ever see this, you can say that. I'm fat. Okay. You got me. 
I agree. But I'm going to let you go. Because I've been on that neck for 20 minutes. And I'm going to let you breathe. Well, she didn't even mention how irrelevant you are. Oh, yeah. Who are you? We've seen several movies that you quote unquote were yeah. in. They don't even know who you are. And I'm going to leave you with this, Amber Heard. There's a hole in the world in a great black pit. And it's full of people that are full of shit. And a vermin of the world that inhabits it.